Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. You had a wonderful presentation from Intel on 5G, and I'm very happy now to share the view of an operator on 5G. I'm going to share why we believe that automation and open the key interfaces are very key ingredients for the success of 5G. And then I also share why we believe that the open communities are going to play a very key role on uh, 5G. I'm delighted to have this ONS summit uh, in Europe, taking place in Europe for the first time. Just to remind you, if I may, that the GSM technology was invented here, was built here 25 years ago, and it was built in Europe by people who uh, uh, were convinced that the old, you know, analogic mobile technology was too fragmented, and that with fragmentation, we would go nowhere, basically. And they jointly and collectively decided to build the global, you know, standard for mobile, and the very key ingredient for this success was uh, to be collective on, on that technology. Uh, sometimes it's uh, quite, in, you know, it's interesting to, to, to look at the past to try to predict the future or to, um, to try to build better the future. Let us try to remind what were the key, you know, what has made the mobile technology a success. Obviously, first, there was uh, very huge uh, customer needs, obviously. Then there was some kind of the business side, some kind of virtual cycle, virtual cycle, uh, because there was a perfect matching between the needs and the, of, and the business developments of um, suppliers, equipment, vendor suppliers, of device suppliers, uh, of uh, the uh, operators, obviously, and they all these needs were perfectly matching. This was on the business side. Then, on the, techno in the technology side, there was a good matching between, first, there was some kind of global standard, one global standard, which uh, was very key to uh, reach the, uh, the, uh, uh, the scale. And from scale, you have, obviously, economics, you know. And uh, also, it was decided to stick on open interfaces, very key open interfaces. And from all you know, this virtual cycle, uh, we, we, we got the, uh, uh, the success we, we, we all know. Uh, I think it's important to just to remind what was the, uh, uh, this kind of uh, successes and key successes factors, just to, to, to keep an eye on the future. So just to be clear, with 5G, um, we are going to meet another, it is going to be another story. Because the underlying technology on 5G is based on virtualization, and uh, the big trend is pushed by a kind of magic word, which is called, uh, you know, this magic word is uh, fragmented, I'm sorry, magic word is uh, the um, uh, disaggregation. All the technology beyond 5G is based on disaggregation. And the question is if this magic world, this magic world is, is going to help us to build the magic, magic world, you know, this kind of nirvana uh, that we are all waiting for, uh, which is the uh, full potential of 5G. If we are not careful, we just believe that if we are not very careful, Will not, will not definitely not have the benefit of 5G. Let us just remind a bit what, what happened on, 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 the, on the past and have a look on the past. Um, in the 25 last, last past years, we built progressively you know, the 2G, 3G, and so on by um, putting more and more services. So starting with this old switched technology and then pushing for the putting uh, some messaging and then some 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 data uh, then some on with 4G we just 
had the first what we call verticals uh, with machine to machine. Uh, 5G is a huge gap compared to all what we have done until now. It's a very, very huge gap. So um, we believe that 5G is not only a matter of spectrum efficiency, it's not only a matter, a question of uh, new radio, 5G is definitely, uh, 5G it is definitely a, a very, very, is going to have, to, to, to have a very huge gap compared to all what we have in terms of complexity. 5G is going to introduce a new order of magnitude of complexity for the functions we are going to hide, for the uh, technology complexity, and also uh, for all the services and new requirements we are putting on 5G. This is fundamentally what, why we believe that we will need automation. Why? Just because we are going to have, we are going to have at the same time, on the same network, a full kind of new services. Obviously, all the old all, all the old services, but also we have uh, machine to machine. We have all kind of verticals with ultra reliable uh, or low latency requirements, and we are going to handle that and to manage that in the same network, in the same you know. Uh, like uh, a full set of independent or almost independent networks. And this is a kind of extraordinary complexity we'll have to deal with. And this is the full promise of 5G. So let me explain a bit uh, how, is going to, how is that going to happen. Uh, this is not going to be uh, for tomorrow. And it's not going to be in one day. Um, over, uh, I would say that um, uh, the first phase of 5G is going to be in the continuity of what we know in 4G. So first phase of 5G will be obviously capacity and will be more, is going to provide more throughput, more speed for our customers. This is, I would say, a kind of 4 plus 1 technology. Uh, and the f this first phase of 5G is already fully standardized as 3GPP. Uh, it is going to be implemented already in the first equipment. We are at Orange are fully committed to deploy this first phase of 5G. We need this 5G just because we have capacity issues and we need to deploy it wherever we are in Europe uh, because we have capacity issues. But this is a simple, I would say, simple phase of 5G. Um, just to let you know that we are currently dri driving um, field trials uh, in Europe, in our eight countries in Europe, and we will launch commercially this 5G in 2020 anyhow in Europe. Then the big issue is more the second phase of 5G, which is the true 5G with all core 5G. Uh, true 5G means that the core network is 5G, uh, it means that it's based on uh, virtualized technology. Uh, it is based on, you know, all this, uh, this real disruption, which is virtualization. Let me talk about the, you know, uh, about the uh, kind of revolution we are facing here, because uh, the journey to the true 5G is going to be long. We are preparing ourselves already. Uh, it is a long journey, and to prepare ourselves for the full 5G, the phase two 5G based on virtualized architecture, we already um, implement virtualized functions on our networks. So we have we have already some few lessons that we can learn from this first, from those first implementations. And the few lessons we have is that we should definitely deal uh, with. Uh, the risk we're facing, uh, we are facing some risk on this virtualization, and if we do not deal right, uh, if we do not deal well with this, this, this risk, we are going to uh, to be, I would say, in big trouble, and all the industry is going to be in big trouble. What we believe is that uh, we definitely have to be very cautious when we uh, 
talk about this about the virtualization. Um, 5G, uh, 5G is going to have its full potential only if and when the full core will be based on uh, virtualized elements. So now the question we have is, this disaggregation can, can bring a lot, of a lot of benefits to the operators. Uh, disaggregation has a lot of potential, and uh, at Orange we are fully, I would say, committed uh, in leveraging on the uh, uh, benefits of the, on, on the, of the virtualization. If we do not handle good this virtualization and the uh, disaggregation, we are going to be in trouble, and all the, uh, I would say, the community uh, is going to be in big trouble. So what is the issue? Uh, the issue is that we, all, we do observe that today there are too many configurations, too many parameters, too many elements uh, that are... That are um, that are proposed by the ecosystem, by the vendors. For example, uh, there are at least, you know, the NFVI, there is no one NFVI standard. There is no one NFVI standard, one NFV infrastructure standard. There is no today one standard for uh, the uh, orchestration. And the, the consequence of that is that uh, all the actors, all the operators do have to make more integration so there are some extra costs to, make integ to, 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 to integrate the, uh, uh, the different elements of the, uh, uh, of the uh, uh, NAV infrastructure. So um, the, um, the, the observation is that the disaggregation is today leading to a fragmented market, and the fragmentation is bad for the ecosystem, the fragmentation bad for the operators, the fragmentation is very bad also for, all the, for, for a lot of actors. So, um, if we do not manage as a community, you know, to make us, we did 25 years ago, to make a global standard, we will not have the benefits from the virtualization, uh, and we have some, we'll have some kind of, you know, the, 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 the mess uh, that we, we, we will all know on the IT system. So we are bringing the IT technologies on the network, and the idea, the idea is not to bring the mess of IT in the network, the idea is to benefit the IT technologies, and also to have the scale effects of the network. You know, the good of the network is that we always kept to one and stuck to one standard. So uh, this is an urgent call for action, which we have to, uh, to, to try to, to stick for one standard. Again, if we fail collectively to deliver one standard and to reduce the number of configuration on the YAS, on the NFVI, on the orchestration, I really believe that we'll have a kind of um, uh, industrial disaster. Industrial disaster is one way. The other way we, we would be that uh, some actors will arrive some actors will arrive, so there will be some kind of de facto standardization of those elements, and uh, they will try to, or they will bring their standards, and uh, I, do not believe that, I do not believe that all the community will benefit from this uh, de facto standardization, because they will, they will more close, I would say, the, uh, the standards that open the standards. So now what is the... Uh, uh, solution and how to scale and to industrialize and how to have the full benefits of the 5G. This is the big question I have, the big question we have, and I believe that, uh, again, we, we, uh, we, we have to work jointly on that. For just remind that Orange, uh, we do operate on 32 countries. We do operate retail market in 32 countries and, and in 20, sorry, 28 countries, and we have B2B business in more than 200 countries. And this makes us very sensitive on standardization because standards help us deploy the networks and help us deploy the services of all the countries we have. If we have no standardization, we have to redo 28 or 200 times the same work. So this is makes it makes it very complex. So this is the reason why we are very very pushy and very much involved in all kind of standardization bodies. So we still believe that the right place to standardize the 
3G, 3G, 5G architecture and to standardize the 5G interfaces is a 3GPP. Now, the 3GPP is only the functions, then the question is how you implement it on the clouds. And this big move to the cloud, um, again, I think it's the journey for five, ten years. All the operators worldwide are going to put the network in the cloud, so we have a transformation uh, to, cloud, to the cloud of more or less 900 operators. It's going to be a long journey. And uh, we believe that there are at least two key building blocks on which we should jointly and as a community work to have things more standardized. So the first one, again, is a yes. First one is the NFV infrastructure. We believe that one of the right places to do that is OPNFV. Um, again, open source communities are one of the good places to uh, uh, one of the right places to, get it, to do this kind of job. So again, I rely upon those communities and we are heavily investing in OPNV. I think we are one of the first contributors in OPNV. This is one building block. The second building block is um, orchestration. We will not have the full benefit of 5G if we do not have the right orchestration layer. And again, the telcos cannot afford to be fragmented. The telco community cannot afford to have um, one orchestration which is different from one operator to another operator and to, to, to another operator and to redo the integration work. This is not go go going to be viable. So um, I urgently, this is again a call for action. Uh, we have contact with GSMA. We also have contact, obviously, with uh, all the ONAP community. We do firmly believe that ONAP is the right orchestrator for the future. It is going to help to, uh, to standardize all kind of API in all sides of the orchestration layer. And uh, we urge the operator community to join their forces in order to, to have ONAP uh, as the target orchestration. So we are investing in open communities in order to address all kind of software and hardware um, um, aspects. This is going to be a, a long journey. We believe that the open communities are the right, are the right place to help us um, reduce the number of configuration, to help us finding the uh, right and the appropriate uh, standards and interfaces uh, to have the economies of, you know, the scale effects, the economies of scale that we are lost with the uh, disaggregation. So this is kind of summary of my talk first. Um, automation and virtualization are very key enablers for the 5G success. It is going to be a very long journey. The open communities open source communities are the right place and we are willing to continue investing in these um, uh, this communities to have the appropriate enablers. And we definitely need to have um, a standardized NFVI, a standardized or a more standardized um, YAS, telco grade YAS, in order to make sure that we get the full benefit of the virtualization without uh, losing the scale effect we had with you know, classical standardization. Thank you.